has been really fantastic uh, for me as a fan. I've watched it obviously from the beginning, and the introduction of both your characters have really changed the dynamic of the show. What's it been like coming onto a show that's already seasoned and coming as newcomers this season? Playing an iconic character too, Betsy Ross. Iconic, and yet their version of her. So it's yeah. <laughs> Um, I think, uh, you know, everybody was, uh, they all welcomed us. I mean, I'm sure we had similar experiences, even though we don't work together. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of in my own little pocket. I'm just yeah. with Tom. <laughs> yeah. Just Tom and I. Um, everyone was, was uh, very kind, and it didn't feel like there was tension or like a, like any kind of transition. Um, but Tom and I, you know, we before we started filming, we spent a bit of time trying to work out the dynamic and, and figure out who Betsy and Crane were together with the little information we had from the writers. I think uh, the one of the, I think, um, things you come across in television is that uh, you discover the character while, while the, the writers are giving totally. you little bits at a time. Mm. Exactly. It's yeah. hard to predict what's yeah. going to happen. That's exactly one of the most interesting, interesting things about working in TV is that it's you, you discover more and more with each script. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, sometimes as an actor, you have to prepare. You know, well, not sometimes, but you have to prepare when you're, you know. Um, given a new character so you do all this work and then you read the script you're like oh I went in a different direction with that so let me you know bring in that and make that adjustment but it's it's always I like the I like the reveal I like the excitement of you know little by little you know um following those cookie crumbs to to this to what ends up being hopefully this fully realized character um and that's really exciting for me and I think coming into the show you know it was already established and they're already you know this team is already working together they already know what they each bring to the table and I you know this is my first big show this is, you know and and Sophie Foster, my character, was completely new to this world. So we kind of shared that experience. And so it was fun for me as I was discovering, you know, where I fit in, me as the actor on the set, she was also discovering where she fits in into this this world that was completely new to her. So, so it was a really cool parallel. With uh, Sophie, she's mentioned several times that there's a a paranormal type of history with her family. Are we going to explore any more of that throughout the rest of this season, or do you have any insight on what you think might have happened and why you're drawn to the supernatural world now? Like, you've welcomed it a little bit more than Danny has when he found out. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think that, you know, she was so kind of <laughs> blown away by this discovery of, you know, this actually everything that she's studied and heard about being possible and real and close and and what that could mean for her life you know and for the answers that she's that have been haunting her or the questions that have been haunting her and not having the answers um, but I think this season is is more dedicated to Sophie we see Sophie trying to to get her footing trying to say okay but, but I really am capable okay you guys I'm agent you know I can do stuff but how do I do it here what do I do I, I feel helpless you know and, and so her trying to figure out her place um, as part of that team and I think that definitely um, I think I think definitely Sophie is getting closer to maybe <laughs> trying to be careful and yeah. dance around. I think she's we're gonna see her get closer to the things that have always been you know um, haunting her and and you know keeping her awake at night I think you know now that we know that she's part of the team and that we know you know she's established okay so what does this mean for her as a person then and I think that's coming well thank you thank so you. much yeah Love thank you show. so much Yeah, I told I told these guys before, but I should tell you too, just so I don't get a bad rap. I'm from New York. I am not a Dodgers fan. I am a Death Star fan, and I am also on the em team of the Empire. Okay. I want to get rid of these dirty rebels and all that. So Fair. it's not about LA. <laughs> it's about the Death Star. Greater than LA. Yeah, gotcha. much better. Gotcha. Well, the hat is awesome. LA's Thank you. Yeah. 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 Someone said to me recently, they're like, the Dodgers are kind of like, this. isn't it the same team? <laughs>
So uh, what can you tell us um, as far as the evolution of season three, um, coming off of season two when uh, Ichabod's wife and his son uh, were, were killed, and then coming into season three, in introducing Pandora yeah. and then the hidden one, what can you tell us about the evolution of that story arc? Well, we um, I, the idea was sort of came came up uh, early on that we were going to do uh, that that Moloch and his whole crew were the first tribulation, and that uh, based on the pilot, and they talked about seven tribulations coming, that we were going to then introduce a second tribulation, and that it needed to be uh, different than the sort of demonic tribulation that Moloch represented. So we sort of searched around, threw out a lot of ideas for you know what it could be, and we sort of centered on this idea that it would be uh, a god. And then um, that evolved into not not just a god, but a way to make that more interesting and more grounded was to make it um, a god in a relationship. You know, and that's sort of where the sort of the, the, the idea for the Pandora and the Hidden One sort of was born. And we thought it'd be cool to bring, uh, to start not with the big bad, but the, or the second big bad, but to start with Pandora herself and then sort of slowly have her mission, you know, evolve into this relationship that would be revealed. So uh, it was all in an effort to, you know, sort of to create a, a second tribulation that would feel important, have big stakes. Um, and also, um, and I think in this kind of, it's kind of cool also tell us more about what it means to be a witness. And I think that, you know, the Moloch side of it and the biblical side of it was really interesting. And I think this year we've learned that there's also like another point of view on what that is so that as we sort of take down these tribulations, we're also learning more and more about these characters, their roles, more importantly, what it, what it means to be a witness. So this season has been one of my favorites so far, as far as the writing is concerned, too. Um, the mythologies, the history, the obvious generous elaborations with the history, Betsy Ross's character, and then, of course, the evolution of both of your characters, um, the Wendigo episode where you have to be channeled and all that energy yeah. and stuff, and then, of course, the collaboration with Pandora. Um, what can you tell us about this season as far as the evolution of your characters, what, have, what has been unexpected? or what has been fun about the, playing the characters. We didn't know at the beginning that yeah. Joe and Jenny would end up together. Yeah, so that, that was yeah. An, an unexpected sort of treat, really. I think it worked out really well. Yeah, we actually, we don't end up, we don't really know what the arc is going to be at the beginning of the season. We kind of get it script by script, just like the fans. So mm -hmm. when I get a script and it ends on, you know, Joe and Jenny are in a fight, I don't know if in the next episode they're going to have broken up. or You know, so so it's it's all very unexpected, which is kind of nice. It is. Yeah. It's nice and it's also challenging. Sometimes, yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. But, um, you know, in life, you don't know what's around the corner. It so. can lend to your spontaneity and, and how yeah. you're mm -hmm. at, you know, acting towards the, the scenes. Yeah. Um, can, can do, yeah. <laughs> so there's uh, your dad's back in the picture. You're very hesitant. Um, can you let us know what's going to happen in the next few episodes? Maybe? Well, I can definitely say that there's more to that story mm -hmm. and we will explore it. And I, it's um, really interesting. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Um, I feel like he knows more about your mom's history than he's letting on. He knows mm -hmm. more about a, a lot of stuff, I think. Mm. He's, he's a complicated dude, so I'm excited that he's been brought into the fold. Um, and yeah, Jenny's having a bit of a hard time with it, but as we saw in the last episode, he kind of touched her heart a little bit, I mm. think, and so maybe she'll she'll be more open to it, but she's kind of a tough nut to crack sometimes, so yeah. we'll see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know you get this all in little bits and pieces, but... Um, okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, Zach, what do you think is Joe's most important contribution to the gang? How did, what does he bring to the fight? I mean... <laughs> 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 well, that was one of my other fan questions, wow. was whether we'll see any shirt, more shirtless scenes. <laughs> wait and see on that. Um, well, I think, I mean, obviously he brings a military combat background, but I think, I actually, I mean, I think the more important thing he's brought this season is what he's brought with Jenny and, you know, that storyline. I think, I think if there's one thing Joe inherited from his dad, it's sort of patience and and understanding, which I think Corbin clearly had, Sheriff Corbin had, which is why he was able to connect with these girls. And so I think, 
I was always sort of surprised with like, you know, Joe could be a hot-headed young Marine, which he was when we first met him, but in this season we actually see him being very mature and really patient with like figuring out how to navigate the relationship with Jenny and the boundaries and all that. And I realized like midway through, I was like, oh, I bet he got that from, from Dad. Because that's, you know, what Sheriff Corbin was so wonderful with. And so I think in a way that's his contribution. That's his and best contribution. And he inherited a love of the Mills sisters. The love of the Mills sisters. <laughs> a, a different kind of love. <laughs> well, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we get to see more of um, Sheriff Corbin's work that he worked on all the paranormal and supernatural stuff. It's, um, I think one of the characters uh, opened up a secret secret compartment yeah, in the Nevins. secret compartment. Yeah. Um, well, we get to see more of that knowledge that he had because obviously you guys are yeah. headed into the catacombs. Well, I think if we get a season four, I'm sure that'll be more explored. I mean, I think the next two episodes are very much focused on dealing with Pandora and the Hidden Ones, and the Corbin sort of files aren't as much a part of that for the next two, but I think that's definitely, if there's a season four, would be something to be explored. Yeah, I'm sure. You know? Will we see any more cool weapons? Oh, uh, yeah, always. of course. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah. Because you had the tar monster in the last episode. Yes. <laughs> more yeah. sledgehammers. I loved uh, the Lance's line. Yeah. Yeah. Fire in his it was, hands. In his hands. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this is the best line ever. Uh, yeah. So, what has been a fun moment this season for you guys? Like, one of your most memorable episodes that mm. or scenes? Uh, I liked. I thought a really fun day was in episode 307 when we were when the berserkers like came to attack us outside your trailer. Right. And what she I actually the she had knives. the knives. And what I actually loved about that it was the first time I think that it was the four of us together. Mm, yeah. It was the first time it was me, Tom, Nicole, and Lindy doing an action sequence. I actually think it was the first time yeah, in the whole right. season. Yeah. And that was really fun because it felt like oh like team witnesses assembled for the mm, first time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, that's a good that's a good one. Um, I loved that episode too with the with the kickboxing um, scene because we got to practice that. You know, yeah. We learned the choreography. They cut a lot of the choreography out because really the scene would have run too long. But just actually like training with you for a couple days yeah. before was super fun. And what was cool was uh, John Copeman, who's our stunt coordinator. He said that when they got the initial draft of that script, it was actually just uh, they were boxing like uh, sparring with boxing and John knew that both Lindy and I have martial arts backgrounds so in the production meeting he said to the to Joe Webb who wrote that script hey could we make it a mixed martial arts sparring instead of just traditional I didn't boxing I know that that's yeah. awesome go John so, uh, cool. so he worked that in which was totally yeah. awesome yeah Four. and I actually thought like that kickboxing scene was one of the best like stepping stones for building that relationship uh -huh. you know there's nothing like sexy sweaty sparring to like yeah. build the sexual tension that's true so. <laughs> And then the stupid shard happened. And yeah. 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 Ruined that. Last question.